So how do you practice mindfulness? How do you start? Well, one of the biggest things I've found that's the biggest block to mindfulness is your self-talk or your head chatter, your monkey mind, as some people call it, where your head's just going flying a mile a minute. And this can happen day and night. For a lot of people, they actually have trouble sleeping. You can't get to sleep or you wake up and your head is just flying because it's bouncing from here to there, going through all of these different scenarios. And the, another thing is during the day, it can hold you back second guessing. It can, you know, you wind up sabotaging yourself and you can also, it can also, as it's going on and on, second guessing you, you can also develop imposter syndrome where you feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. Because this self talk is either worried about the past and what happened in the past and did I mess that up and beating you up, or it's about the future and thinking about, oh my God, how am I going to do this, all this? But you're not present. The whole key to mindfulness is to be present in this moment. And if you're worried about the past or the future, you're not here. It's all, all around. Like there, there's a saying, the present is the present because it's a gift to you. And it's about being here. And most people don't realize first of all, that they are not their thoughts. Uh, they also don't realize they have control. A lot of people think they are their thoughts. You're not. Spoiler alert. You are not your thoughts. You have control over your thoughts. They do not control you. This is critically important. Okay? Uh, so you've got to realize you're the one in control. Now, uh, with this, um, with this, you can go through all sorts of practices to be able to, um, you know, over time reduce that thought. But I kind of look for shortcuts. I like the little Jedi mind tricks that that work phenomenally. And something I discovered years ago is something someone dis discovered by studying Buddhist monks who had meditated for fifty years. Now, these monks didn't do this consciously, but somewhere over those 50 years, they learned how to silence that self-talk. What they did at some point in all of their practice is they realized this technique that I'm going to show you, which is a really simple technique that allows you to shut off that self-talk whenever you want. They didn't do it consciously. That's why it took 50 years. It was hit or miss. The nice thing is that by having pulled this out of people, we can now do this at will without taking 50 years. So if you'd like to learn that, that's exactly what this video is about. I'm going to show you how to turn off your self-talk, step into presence, step into mindfulness whenever you want, as easy as that. So if you are um, at night, you can't go to sleep, you'll be able to just sh shut it off, turn it off, roll over and drift off. If your head's going in a meeting or at work and bouncing all around, do I, how I, do I do this, what do I do? It's gonna, you're gonna be able to uh, change things uh, on a dime and stop it so that you can be really present, really hear the people at the meeting and, and really be able to focus instead of bouncing all over the place. Would that be useful? Anybody? Okay, so let's play with this. Uh, the key here is <laughs> I'm going to ask you a few questions and they are going to sound a little bit strange, but go with me on this, okay? Don't, um, don't worry about whether it makes sense or not. If it made sense, you probably would have tried it already and you would already handle this. Just play with me on this and go with it, okay? Just go with the first thing that comes to mind. So get a sense of your self-talk, okay? If you can't get it right now, pause the video until you do, until you hear it. Like you could just be, oh my, what's he doing? Am I doing this right? Whatever, but get a sense of that, right? Here's the question. 
Where in your head is that coming from? Top, left, front, right, back, center, where? First sense, don't think about it, first sense. And there's no right answers. Wherever it is, is perfect. All right? So, now what I'd like you to do is imagine, almost like you could, imagine that you could pull that to the very top of your head, almost like you're pulling your voice up on a piece of string to the very top of your head. And notice what you notice. Uh, you know, for some people, it stays the same, but for others, there may be a change in the quality of the voice or something. Now, almost imagine, almost like you could pull it on a piece of string, you could pull it right to the very back of your head. Just imagine that you could pull it right back there. Okay? And notice what you see. Is there any difference? Is there any change? Maybe there's not, but maybe there is. Just become aware there's no right or wrong. Now, there's a spot right here in the back where your spine meets your skull. And what I'd like you to do is just imagine, almost like you're pulling it on a piece of string, you could pull that self-talk right back there into that spot. There's a spot it snuggles into just right. And when you do that, what do you notice? What happens? It goes away. It gets quiet and it goes away. I have no idea how the neurophysiology of that works. But if you move that internal dialogue to that spot where your spine meets your skull, it cannot operate, it can't work, it goes away. And this is what Buddhist monks learned by hit or miss over 50 years of practice. And now we can do that in a moment. You don't have to take it to the top of your head into the back, you just pull it right back there. And that may seem difficult at first, but the more you do it, the easier it will become. And, you know, this may seem strange to you, but think about it before now, before these last few minutes, you didn't know that you, your voice came from a spot in your head, that you could move it. Now you've discovered that spot. It, to me, it's like taking a car, driving it into the garage and shutting the garage door. It just shuts it off. And when I do it, I get a nice big sigh because that weight of that head chatter, that critic is gone. Now, you don't want to get rid of it permanently because we need it. We need it to figure things out. We need it to know how to think through, you know, do I buy this jar of beans or this jar of beans at the grocery store? What you do not need is for you to be stuck in a loop, beating you up for something that you did 10 years ago. That has no value whatsoever. Okay? So, here's the little secret. Doing this now, once, is kind of neat. It's a neat little parlor trick. That's not the magic. The magic is if you will invest a few minutes a day for the next week, and I'll show you what you do, is that you do this four or five times a day or more. And all you do is just move that voice to that spot, take a nice breath, and spend a couple of minutes in silence. And one of those times, you extend it. For some people, they find at first, um, they can only keep it there for uh, you know a minute or two, but it will extend over time. Others find once they keep it there, they can keep it there for a long time. What I'd like you to do is extend that as long as you can. So if you, are um, you're only able to do it for a minute or two that one time, Key, every time it pops out, put it back there. And during that time, what you can do is you can take a walk in presence without that head chatter. You can do some chores, do the dishes. Uh, you could meditate. If you already meditate, this will allow you to go so much deeper if you silence that self-talk 
before you meditate. If you don't, a lot of people have had trouble because that self-talk won't stop. This could be your doorway in. As you sit to meditate, you just silence it and then start to focus on your breath or whatever practice there is. Now here's another little piece of magic to make this work even better for you. Every time you silence the self-talk, do this. So you're going to do this four or five times a day. Each time as you silence it, do this. What you're doing is you're conditioning yourself ah, so that every time you do that, you're silencing your talk. So after a week of doing that five times a day, you won't even have to think of moving the self-talk. All you have to do is this and you can ah, step into presence. So are you willing to invest a few minutes a day to be able to completely shift your life, to be able to sleep through the night, to be much more present and not stressing and freaking yourself out. You know, four, five times a day, uh, you could do it as soon as you wake up. Instead of getting into the craziness of what you got to do, just step into presence. You could do it, take a lunch break and do do a little bit during breaks you can do that um, on your commute to work or commute home before you get out of the car or walk in the door <sighs> take a moment to do that to leave all the stress of home or work in the other place for some people work is more stressful for others home is more stressful and you could do it before you go to sleep and at some point to, you know, go into a meditation, to go do yoga, to take a walk, to clean the house, whatever it is that you do once a day, one of those four or five times, make sure it's longer, stretch it out so you can do it for 10 or 15 minutes. You will be amazed the change in how you live your life in just uh, one week. So... Those are my secrets. This little trick is for you to be able to transform your life, to be able to step into mindfulness, into presence so much more easily. If you'd like to find out more, uh, something I have done since the pandemic is make my Mindfulness 101 program available for free to everyone because so many people need it uh, and will be needing it for some time to come. Uh, all you have to do is go to say no to stress.com and you can access the full program which is starting with this technique. Enjoy.